gauntlet is in D minor, and a lot of the times our students are, are comfortable with some of the minor finger patterns, but for some reason when we start switching over to flat keys, um, the pitch can get really sideways in a hurry. So I'm going to go over some strategies on how to build good technique to, so that our students can play in tune. And if our students are playing in tune, it's going to make a lot of things easier to do. So let's get into this. The first thing that we need to establish are minor finger patterns, and we've got some on the D string right off the bat. So in our violas, we've got D, E, F natural. That's a low two, as is indicated by the down arrow. At measure six, we've got the D, E, F natural pattern in, in violins, while violas are just playing uh, A's here, which is fine. Jumps up to the B flat on the next one. We'll go over that later. Here in, in measure 10, we've got D, E, F natural here in the low strings. And then um, we've got a variation of it that goes E, F natural, G. So they, the low strings will get the open D, E, F, and then they'll get E, F, G, which is different because they don't have to go up to the, the A string to play B flat, at least not for this one. They'll, they'll have something like that later. So everyone at some point will have that minor finger pattern on the D string with that half step in between the E and the F. And it's important that students are able to get that half step in tune um, when they, you know, cellos and basses, cellos will have to figure out how to go up to this fourth finger G here. Basses can play open G. We do get a little bit of this minor finger pattern on the G string for, for cellos. You know, like here at 17, we've got this pattern and it comes back a few times where we have D and then B flat on the G string. C, D, and we get this pattern again right here, D, B flat, C, well, now we have F, but they have that minor pattern on the G string as well. Sometimes we've got uh, scales, you know, the, these scales in the, uh, in the first and second violins where they start on a G and they come up playing B flat uh, on up the scale, but they don't have E flats. They have E naturals. So it's, it's functioning here as more of a subdominant scale rather than being completely modal. But the first and second violins will, will get a chance to play that same pattern on on the G string, and they'll get the whole tetrachord. And the violas right here at measure 20 will have that low two on the G string as well, B flat to A, and they get a variant of it here which acts sort of as a non-chord tone here, B flat to A, um, and again here, 33, B flat to A. So lots of minor finger patterns, or, or one-two patterns, if that's what you want to call it, on the, the G strings and the D strings. It's important to get those in tune right off the bat. Make sure everybody can play those in tune. There's not a whole lot of major patterns here. There are a couple, but getting that minor pattern in tune is going to really help. The basses here have a pretty unique part. Not unique in that it doesn't match up with the cellos, but unique in how they play it. Now, Doug Spada does play the bass. It's not his primary instrument, but he can get around fairly well on the bass. And so he wrote this part very logically, and it's very doable. And the fingerings here are actually really good, but you might need to spend some time with your basses. You might need to do... Uh, a bass sectional, you know, after school, before school, lunch, advocate, study hall, whatever, whenever you can get your hands on, on some bass players. Or, you know, if you've got a couple extra bucks in your orchestra account, you can maybe bring somebody in and, and teach your basses for a couple days. That, that would be really beneficial because some of this stuff is pretty different. Now, just to show you what's going on, I'd like just to take a look here at, at 41 because all of this stuff is half position coming in, right? So at 41, these B-flats on the A string are low one, right? So they're going to play this low one, of course, then D, and then this F right here, they're actually going to play fourth finger 
instead of second finger because they're going to stay in half position. Okay, then open D here. E is second finger, not first finger, second finger, because again, we're staying in half position. F, fourth finger, open G, D, fourth finger again for these Fs here, then back to low one on the A string. See, if, if we would have shifted back to first position and played this two, sorry, played this one, two, then we would have to shift back down here and that's not going to be as consistent. So we stay in half position for quite a bit. These Cs are going to be played fourth finger, not second finger. And then once we get these minor patterns on the D string, that's when we play, we play open D and then go back into first position. I don't know how much experience your bass players have playing in half position, but it would be really good if you could take them out and just go over some of this stuff with them or, or get somebody to come in as a consultant and, and work with your bases, or, or maybe somebody from your varsity group could come in. I don't know, somebody, just have them come in and just kind of show your younger bass players how to get around in that part. It's, it's not very difficult once they figure it out, but it is something they're going to have to figure out. Probably the biggest battle that you're going to have is the uh, B flats on the A string for violins and violas. And the way it's written is that, you know, let's just look right here from, let, let's just look at measure six and seven. You know, you've got this B flat on the A string to A, and then you've got to be able to get down to this E onto the D string. So that's a different kind of first finger. You've got low one here, and then you cross strings, and you've got regular one here. And, and students can get that confused a lot. And a lot of times, you know, <laughs> I'm listening to a group play and, you know, it's just D minor, D minor. And then, um, la ti do ti do blah. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. That's not good. And if they're missing that already in measure three, there's a lot of piece left. And it's probably not going to get any better when all of your violins are doing it here in measure seven, trying to find that. B flat. And then again, trying to find these E's. And sometimes these fingerings get comp uh, conflated and you get E flats trying to happen here. And so there, there's an exercise I like to use. And, and it kind of sounds weird when you're playing it, but it uses the open D string and the open A string to kind of ground the ear. And you can practice going from open D to E, then open A to B flat, back to open A, E, open D. And then you can go back up and down and up and down, D, E, A, B flat, A, E, D, E, A, B flat, and just kind of noodle around with that pattern, learning the difference between low one and high one on those two strings. It's going to make a big difference. Now, along with that, you are crossing strings. So when you cross to the, the A string, you're going to need to rotate the shoulder so that you get consistency. And then when you cross back to the D string, you're going to need to rotate back. Now, it's not a lot, but it's enough that it will affect your tuning. And if you're reaching back and you're flattening out the finger using bad hand shape, it's going to be really hard to develop that consistency with pitch. So it's very, very important to use your best technique here. And as they're noodling up between D, E, A, B flat, and then back down, you know, walk around your classroom and fix hand positions. You know, you might want to help guide their elbows so that they're, they're taking their elbows in when they go down to the D string and then out onto the A string so they can use their very best technique. And once they get it, things are going to start getting a lot easier here. But that's probably going to be the, the biggest battle that you're going to have to face here in Gauntlet. Um, fortunately, here at measure seven, the B flats here in, in the violins line up with the B flats and cello basses. Same thing in measure three, two. So, what I like to do is, and you can have your, your violas play right along with them, start at measure six, have them play, and then have them hold the downbeat of seven. Should have a octave B flats here. Everybody should be playing the same B flat. You know, make sure that's in tune. 
Start again, six, go all the way to seven, hold, make sure everybody's playing in tune. Okay, if it's not in tune, have them adjust. Have them adjust, okay? If it's way out of tune and they're not adjusting well, make them adjust, okay? Just have them shift up to a different note, different random note on the, the A string, have them play first finger and slide back in, into B flat until they match cellos and basses. That's gonna get them to listen, okay? If they're still not getting it, you might need to go down the row and make adjustments that way, okay? You're too high, you're too low, you're just right. You know, Goldilocks, good job. Once you've got the B flat in tune, you still don't want to take that E for granted on the and of two in measure seven. So right here in measure seven, you can do the same thing. Well, I'd start back in six still, play through six, play through seven, and then hold the E, okay? The E will kind of clash a little bit with the D and the violas, but you can have the violas play right along. You know, you just have them play two, three along with your violins and six, seven, and that'll solve that problem. And then they'll have that E against the B flat here. That's, that's a tritone, but, um, you know, we can still get that in tune. When you're learning gauntlet, you might not want to even start at the beginning. When, when you're teaching your students this piece. It might be advantageous, actually, to start in measure 56, where you've got the longer note values. 56 to 73, maybe even all the way, you know, you can get them to play some of these chord notes, 77, 78, 79, but particularly from 56 to 73, you've got these longer note values, and you've got more harmonies to work with, more things to tune to. This might be the best place to start when developing their ears to be able to play in this D minor key. So you might want to spend, you know, some time just working on 56 to, to 73. And then once they kind of get that established, go back and then try the beginning. See if that doesn't help. See if they're not used to it. And maybe start every rehearsal at 56. You know, get them used to playing. And also, you know, with the, the longer the longer bows there, it gets those bows moving. It, you know, it gets them to start thinking about stuff. And it's easier to tune these longer notes than these short notes here at the beginning. Because just about everything is short. As we start off, it's harder to tune those shorter notes. So that might be a good strategy. In the next video, we're going to talk about style and how to play gauntlet with some good energy and get the musical effect to come out. So I'll see you in the next one.